Hi there, good morning and welcome. This is Chartbusters, the first one of 2019. I'm Mangla Malu. With me is Nigel D'Souza. We talk about the markets, of course, a quarter of a percent in terms of losses for the Nifty as well as the Sensex, the mid-caps holding around the flat line. The Nifty banked down about three-tenths of a percent, but general cheer all around as it is the start of the new year. Good morning, Nigel. Good morning, Mangla. And wishing all our viewers a very, very happy new year. May 2019 be a star for you as well as your families, both personally as well as professionally. Mangalam is talking about a quarter of a percent lower. A lot of people, I'm sure, will be thinking of the oh, other. A quarter which has gone down. <laughs> Mangalam, you relate quite well to alcohol. Uh, let's being just say a, it's, it's being, got good chemistry. It, it's good chemistry. And you're talking yeah. about chemistry as well. 2019 uh, will be the Alcohol year. is a solution, literally. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get uh, to Ashwini's call. Absolutely, let's do that. Let's get to Ashwini's call. Ashwini, uh, your call on 2019, your call on the index, and uh, good uh, New Year wishes to you as well. Well, Happy New Year to both of you and the viewers. I think 2019 will be different from 2018. Uh, 2018 corrected the excesses of 2017. Chances are 2019 will again create those excesses and new people will come and lose money probably. So the idea should be to get in you know, when people are not interested in the market, so that when everybody is in, you are able to sell. So this is a time where you do your mid-cap portfolios, a small cap, etc., because just the wind uh, will take you into profitability. But uh, having said that, uh, I would think that uh, 2019 will be a trending year, as 2018 was a sideways year, so uh, that just follows. Uh, having said all of this about today, you know, early morning, uh, the Nifty and the Bank Nifty rejected higher levels. So if you see the first uh, five-minute kind of bar, uh, we rejected 27,350 thereabouts. We rejected 10,950 uh, levels. So my sense is that, uh, you know, even if uh, the volumes, etc., are low, you hardly have two sectors uh, showing you positive results. Mm -hmm. So possibly uh, we could head towards 10, 750, maybe today, tomorrow, and uh, have some more consolidation before 10, 950, 11,000 gets crossed. So right now is a good time to get short on Bank Nifty and Nifty. Obviously, uh, recent highs <coughs> from your stop loss, but... Uh, on, at higher levels, the market is finding fairly strong resistance. Having said all of that, uh, you know, banks are uh, taking it on the chin. So, Indusin Bank is a sell with a stop of 1600, uh, target of uh, 1540. ICICI Bank is a sell with a stop of 1970, target of 1925. And uh, United Spirits uh, is a sell with a stop of 631. Target of 610. All right, Ashmi, thanks so much for that. What about some disclosures? Uh, we have, uh, you know, long puts on Bank Nifty, so we have bearish positions. All right. Uh, well, thanks so much, Ashmi, for joining in and giving us all those details. Well, let's get straight to the big CNBC TV Dean exclusive then. Future retail should be the stock you're looking at. The much awaited future uh, retail Amazon deal has hit a roadblock owing to recent changes in the FDI policy on e-commerce. We learned from sources that the deal is set to be reworked. CNBC TV 18's Priya Sheth has all those details. Priya, tell us what's happening. This deal's not happening now. Well, at this point in time, we do understand that the deal may perhaps uh, be in a pause mode, although at this point in time, future retail Amazon deal uh, may hit a roadblock owing to changes in the FDI policy on e-commerce. Now, at this point in time, we learned that uh, at, in this current structure, the deal cannot go through. And therefore, sources indicate that uh, the companies may have to rework the contours uh, of the deal in line with the changes in the FDI policy. Now, the changes in the FDI policy on e-commerce says that an entity has Having equity participation by e-commerce marketplace entity cannot sell its products on a platform run by such a uh, marketplace entity. And therefore, these uh, policy changes are effective 1st February two 2019. And at this point, uh, the companies are making representations to the government. Amazon is seeking more clarity as far as investments are concerned. They're also seeking clarity on the applicability of new norms for investments made through investment arms. So legal options are uh, expected to be, you know, analyzed 
stabilized at this point and um, a feasible investment structure is set to be laid out uh, and we expect further clarity on the potential deal structure only by the second week of uh, January. So at this point in time, there is a sort of roadblock that has come in its way. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to keep you updated as to how this pans out. But do remember that uh, Amazon has been in talks to buy uh, over 9.5% uh, stake in future retail with an option to hike stake at a later date. We did reach out to the companies. Uh, future retail uh, and email did not uh, elicit, elicit any response from the company. And as far as Amazon is concerned, they said that they do not comment on speculations of what they may or may not do. Absolutely, Priya. Thanks a lot for that. In fact, you know, the day the FDI, new FDI norms came, the next day we had Kishore Biani. He said he wasn't really worried at that time. He was worried about the online grocery players that would have, uh, uh, you know, uh, impacted their business. And it would have been positive for future retailers, the, the likes of all the offline players. But that time, the, the big question was whether this deal will happen or not. We posed a couple of questions to him. He was pretty non-committal. But if the stock price is something to go by, if uh, the director pulls up, you know, a two-week uh, or maybe a little more in terms of the horizon of the stock price. The day he came by, uh, the stock price was close to around 559 odd rupees. And ever since say, uh, there, you have the big correction seen from 559 thereabouts to sub 500 where we have been seeing. So there was a part of uh, the street which was fearing that this deal may or wrong. may not happen. In fact, what we'll do is we'll hear out what Kishore Biani had to say to us just a couple of weeks ago when the new FDI norms were notified. Being in the market and being a, one of the leading players, we, are, we constantly are in discussion with every other player in terms of what can we do together. So I think within the contours of any policy, we'll have, we'll, it continues, the discussion continues. So I don't know uh, about a particular transaction or a particular thing which I can comment upon, but I believe uh, the policy was already existing B2B. So there is nothing which has changed for us. Any transaction uh, which we do will be at a group level in terms of what synergies we can build. Uh, because we have a supply chain business, we have a FMCG business, we have a fashion business. So we bring in the, the strength of the entire country's distribution and we operate in more than 355 cities and towns. So what we bring in our strength has to be complemented with other people's strength which can create something better. Welcome back then. As promised, we have the management of uh, Sangam India with us. We have Mr. Modani, the MD of the company who joins us uh, on the show. Hi, Mr. Modani. First of all, wishing you a very, very happy new year. Well, uh, you know, everyone, as trading started early this morning, Sangam India was a stock that was almost most active because more than 4% equity changed hands. Uh, so uh, if you could fill us in, Mr. Modani, were the promoters buyers? Are you aware of any exchange in terms of who were the parties? I actually, I'm not aware. And uh, first of all, I want to wish uh, Happy New Year to all of you and uh, the viewers. Sangam India Limited, uh, I mean, I'm, I will uh, see this is uh, the trading which has taken place. Uh, I think the company which was uh, going to perform better in times to come, the reason, two reasons, because after the demand and the GST settling, so, uh, and the company's foray into the C9, the retail business for at leisure and all, and uh, so company performance, which was not good for last one and a half years due to the lot of other issues, but now things are settling and it is going to give a better uh, results in time to come. It will be better than last year. Promoters were not and buyers? Our promoters are not buyers. Not buyers, this. okay. All right, yeah. Mr. Motani, you know, uh, uh, we're looking through your shareholding pattern. The equity yeah. uh, size that changed hands today was 4.78% or 4.87%, yeah. sub 5%. The yeah. only singular entities who have that sort of stake are either promoters or perhaps there is this GMO fund which has 5% plus stake in your company. Now that yeah. you're saying promoters are not buyers or sellers, are you yeah. aware of the fund having sold? Yeah, I'm not aware because let me see because I'll leave, I'll leave, unless it comes to us, and I mean, it's a, they can uh, change the hands, but it is not in our knowledge. Okay, all right. Um, and then, Mr. Modani, let's talk about business. As you're saying, last couple yeah. of years haven't been very good because GST yeah. demonetization was, uh, you know, was yeah. a couple of factors that hit your business. So let's talk yeah. about business then. If you could yeah. tell us what is your current capacity in terms of fabric, uh, what is it currently? Are you looking to increase it? And what is the current capacity utilization level? As well as, you know, in terms of denim, uh, what, what exactly yeah. is the capacity out there? Actually, uh, actually, Sangam India is in all polyviscose dyed yarn segment is 47%. Mm -hmm. And the PV suiting is 11% and denim is 18%. And cotton yarn, because we are a captive producer of cotton yarn and using. So denim is only 18% because denim was badly hit 
because of the over capacity in the market and the prices were not uh, matching but now things are settling because the big so players denim, are going so mr modani you mean that denim uh, the capacity utilization is only 18% or no 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 the split up of uh, the revenue uh, yeah have a revenue the okay. denim we are we are running at 80% capacity okay it 80% capacity so uh, that is it is there because we are want to control the data's level and the market this thing but mm. other spinning capacity is all 95% the policy service code suiting is all well there is no only issue in denim because of the over capacity and the payment position in the market because mm. it's all very delayed but i think things are improved so we have changed the focus already we are giving more focus on exports mm. where the issues are not there so we have changed the strategy long back and uh, we are going to have a growth in export in denim as well in all segment huh? whether pv yarn pv suiting last year our export was 441 crores this year probably will cross more than 500 crores we are trying to do so 441 so crores 441 crores would be around uh, uh, 20 yeah. percent of your total revenues 25 percent of your total yeah, revenues, yeah 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 all right, right. Absolutely um, right. so if you could tell us something uh, about your exports itself uh, what is your currency hedging policy because from the start of this year we saw a fair amount of weakness in the rupee nine nine and a half percent uh, calendar year to uh, calendar year. So, if you could tell us uh, what is your hedging policy with regards to currency, and weaker rupee would have helped you, right? Yeah, actually, what we are doing. Suppose we are booking the order today, and we are uh, because we have delivered the goods in ninety days time. So, we book the dollar, and whatever premium we are getting, we are getting the advantage of that, and we are not doing any sort of a short sale or power sale based on our business of today model. We take the today's price. And whatever extra is there, we don't uh, believe in that. That sometimes, based on the order, we book. So our policy is very clear because we hardly have any imports. So we have only a few imports of uh, like Ryan, very uh, less than by one percent. And uh, so we are uh, uh, taking up uh, decision on the today's uh, dollar position with the order position. Mr. Mudani, you spoke about your uh, capacity utilization, ninety percent plus in your yarn business and eighty percent for your denim. If you could tell us the absolute capacity. Uh, is it yeah. 30 MMTs for uh, your fabric business, 40 yeah, MMTs yeah. for denim, and yeah. uh, garment is 3.6 million units? Yeah, very, very right. You are absolutely All right. very and correct. And no capex that you are doing? No capex we are doing only for the modernization and all because uh, 2014 15 we did it capex. So we, uh, I mean, we are doing only modernization that is around 10, 15, 20 crores that is out of internal accruals and all. So we are, uh, our debt level is quite controlled and we have a long term debt less than 350 crores. So okay. we we add the asset base of 800 crores. All right. So you have a capex of around 300 crores for the next couple of years. Is that what you're trying to? No, uh, no, no, no. We are not going to. This is a out uh, outstanding of the loan as on date. Okay, outstanding uh, loan. Uh, you're uh, saying is around uh, three fifty, three fifty, three fifty crores. But you'll be having yeah, some working capital as well, I believe, because no, if no, I look... no, 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 no. Working ahead, capital is different. Is long term, long term, long term. So long term is around 350 crores. Is that right, Mr. Yeah. Bhutani? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely okay. Right. So and and your working capital would be another 200, 250 crores. No, because... no, no. Because our production value is, uh, I mean, this year we will be having a turnover around around 2,000 crores. So okay. our working capital is around. Uh, 400 crores plus. Okay, 400 crores plus, and you have a long term offer on 300 crores odd. Okay, so but 2000 crores, I remember, Mr. Mudani, you know, a, few, a couple of years ago, you said you're going to be reaching that target. And good to yeah, know this that, year, this year, uh, good this to year know that you're telling us that you're going to be reaching the target in this year itself. A quick question yeah, yeah, with a yeah. small steel capacity as well. Is that still with no, your, that is, is it not, 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 No, no, no. It is not our company. We have nothing to do with the, okay. that. Okay. Malakshmi, the Sangha Media is totally purely textile company. Absolutely. And we are to textile only. So that's good news. So you're saying top line right. of around 2,000 crores is what you're going to do in the first half uh, well, of the year? You have done around yeah, yeah. 940 crores. So great yeah, news. Yeah, uh, yes, thank Focusing you. Focusing on thank the top you. line, uh, Mr. Modani, you have done around yes. 440 crores last year, right? In terms of exports, uh, you yes. said exports are. You're looking more at exports. So exports are expected to grow at a faster clip. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, 15 percent. We will cross uh, 500 crores. So this year you'll cross more than 500 crores. So 25 percent is the broad, uh, you know, number that you are uh, working with in terms of percentage of the total will be, uh, yes. you know, coming in from exports. Well, give us yeah, a sense so in terms of margin, sir. Uh, margins first half of the year have improved to around 9, 9.3, 9.4% 9 odd. This is a yeah, margin that we can work with for the full year? Yeah, full year, definitely it will be, uh, it will be available. It will be 9.5%? Yeah, yeah, it will be. It will. All right. Mr. Right, Mudani, right. yeah. 
Okay, nine and a half percent in terms of margins. Now, before we let you go, Mr. Mudani, you said 350 crores in terms of your long-term debt, close to 400 crores in your short-term debt. You will be making more money, like you said, your margins will be nine and a half percent, top line of 2,000 crores. Uh, when does debt repayment come by? Uh, debt repayment will be uh, 2020, 2024, 25 will be debt-free. 24, 25? Uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah. no possibility yeah, of prepayment? Yeah. No, prepayment, we can do it because that will reduce our working capital margin because when we are not going for CapEx, that money will be funded, so we will have a less short-term requirement because because the loans are available on the tough and the government policy where we have an interest subsidy. So there is no point making uh, prepayment, but the working capital will be reduced. One second, you said you have, you have uh, interest subsidy. So what exactly is your total cost of borrowing? Borrowing is around, for long-term borrowing is around 6.5% uh, or so. Okay, and uh, working capital would be how much? Uh, it is around 8.4 to 9.4, depending upon the... Difference. Okay, because that means your rough interest cost should not be more than 7%, because 50% is long-term, 50% is short-term. However, yeah, yeah. last year you spent about 68 crores in terms of finance costs. The first half of this year as well, you've spent about 34 crores in terms of finance costs. That yeah. back calculation says it's 10% uh, cost of finance. Why is that? Uh, uh, around, around because uh, uh, some of the loans, were, because the loan is available uh, for the machines and the stuff, so some loan is around 7.5% and not 6%. But probably it is coming because the LCV are also using the letter of credit okay. and all these things, so depending upon that. All right. That is 11%. Okay, right. Mr. Modani, wishing you a good New Year's Day. Thanks so much for joining. I'm sure we pulled you out, uh, you know, from your busy scared. <laughs> but by the end of today, we'll at least know who was party to that 4% mm. transaction. Yeah, uh, yeah. All the best for the second half of this year. 2,000 crores, you told us a couple of years ago that you'll do 2,000 crores in revenues, and you're going to yeah, do that. So Exclusive renowned economist William Bouter of Citigroup says that the Fed may hike rates slowly in 2019. And this is for domestic reasons. Not, that, not just that, he also added that 2019 will be the year where most of the economies will slow down. Listen in. Globally, I think 2019 is likely to be a year that most of the world slows down. Not recession material yet, but a distinct slowdown. The US and China both uh, are scheduled to slow down for purely domestic reasons. On top of that, we have the trade conflict. On top of that, we have the um, you know, the temporary partial shutdown of government in the U.S. We have uncertainty in Europe, uh, both related to Brexit and uh, to uh, rising populism. So uh, there is more than enough, I think, to uh, make for a uh, steady global slowdown during 2019. The Fed can for uh, domestic dual mandate reasons can continue to hike slowly and gradually, but continue to hike during 2019. I think we will, for the time being, continue to contract the balance sheet uh, in this very gradual and measured way of uh, you know, 60 billion a month. Uh, the Fed will not change its course of action there unless there is visible evidence of faster than expected weakening of economic activity in the U.S. We really don't know what's going on. Yes, we had another, what was it, four-hour or whatever telephone conversation between Xi Jinping and uh, Donald Trump, but uh, the meaning of that in terms of concrete progress in the trade negotiations is, I think, very unclear. And remember, these aren't pure trade negotiations. These aren't even trade plus tech plus inter, uh, intellectual property right negotiations. This is the new Cold War. The global economy will slow down, uh, driven by China and uh, the U.S. Well, for all those who are watching, we'll wrap up on Chartbusters. Uh, you know, all the best for the remainder of the trading session and wishing you a very, very happy 2019.